Hello dear students, welcome to pen and paper chemistry on YouTube. The topic for this video is hydrogen peroxide and this is part 4 where we are going to talk about the reducing action of hydrogen peroxide. For those who are visiting the channel for the first time, just to let them know that we have already covered the preparation, the purification of hydrogen peroxide in our previous videos. Please don't forget to visit them. And the most important thing, don't forget to keep a pen and paper handy so that you can have notes ready for offline reference. So let's get going, part 4 of the properties of hydrogen peroxide. In our previous videos, we've already dealt with the chemical properties of hydrogen peroxide that is decomposition, acidic nature, oxidizing nature. In this video, we'll be talking about reducing nature and the bleaching action of hydrogen peroxide. To simplify things for you, what I've done over here is we've formulated into the form of a chart. So this particular flow chart depicts the reducing nature of hydrogen peroxide and reducing nature in three different media, neutral, acidic and basic medium. Don't worry, we are going to write the equations for each one of them and you will find them very, very easy to write as well as remember for future reference. You just need to keep a pen and paper handy so as to be able to write when I am writing here on the board. Before we go ahead with writing of the equations, we need to rem understand why hydrogen peroxide is able to show a reducing character. In our previous lesson, we've done that hydrogen peroxide is a good oxidizing agent because it is able to release nascent oxygen. It is able to get rid of the oxygen, which can come in handy for the other substances. At the same time, it is able to take up oxygen. How? That's because if it comes across somebody who's more strong than hydrogen peroxide, somebody who's stronger than hydrogen peroxide and says, oh, oh, I also want to do away with my oxygen. So what does hydrogen peroxide do? It says, no worries. I'll give company to the oxygen that you release. So both the molecules release oxygen forming oxygen molecule. That's it. That's the entire gist of this particular set of reactions. So let's get going with the first one, reducing nature of hydrogen peroxide in neutral medium. We've already almost written the first reaction in the series. So what we've got is hydrogen peroxide. I'm taking the silver oxide one. Hydrogen peroxide breaks down to give you water and nascent oxygen. Now, this nascent oxygen is nothing but atomic oxygen, which is being generated in the medium. Ag2O, silver oxide, black in color, releases the oxygen, forms silver plus oxygen. Now, the two oxygen atoms, they cannot survive alone. So, what happens over here? They come together, strike a bond and they form a friendship resulting in the formation of a molecule of oxygen. Now, what do you have to do as a student? The chemicals have already done what they wanted to. Yes, first step, balance. So, balance each of the equations separately. This is balanced, yes. Go on to the next one, balance. Go on to the third one, balance. After balancing, nullify, cancel, no profit, no loss. So, nascent oxygen liberated, nascent oxygen used up. We cancel it. Lastly, we add the two equations. So, what do we have over here? Ag2O plus hydrogen peroxide 
that is on the left hand side that is the reactant side of the equation giving us 2 A G plus H 2 O. Is that all? No, do not forget the oxygen over here. See it is pretty simple. Now, why do not you try writing the reaction of hydrogen peroxide with lead dioxide PbO2? Go ahead, pause the video, try writing the reaction yourself. You will see the confidence rising and you will feel that this topic was so easy. Why were you avoiding it all the time? Okay, written here two of the partial equations. By the way, oxidizing action has also been broken down into simplistic partial equations for you to understand. So, in case you have not seen that video, I would highly recommend for you to visit that video and practice writing the equations as well. Go ahead, complete. Let us go on to another equation. This was the second one. Let us talk about the reaction with halogens. Now, the reaction with halogens takes place in the presence of moisture. So, our first equation remains the same. It breaks down to give you H2O plus nascent oxygen. Now, we are talking about moisture. So, chlorine reacts with water. You can also take the example of bromine. The reaction would still remain the same. Write the reaction with any one of them, not both of them. Do not confuse yourself. Go ahead. Chlorine plus water. What do we have? HCl and HOCl, hypochlorous acid. Now, we know that this hypochlorous acid is again unstable. So, it has a tendency to release the nascent oxygen. And there we go. We have a companion for our nascent oxygen from the first step. So, let us put them together. They strike a friendship, form oxygen molecule. Well done. Now, what is our next task? to balance each of these equations. Balanced, yes. Balanced, yes. Balanced, yes. Balanced, yes. Next, after balancing, no profit, no loss. So, add up the two equations, nullifying or cancelling the products and the reactants wherever applicable. So, oxygen over here, cancel out. Number of oxygen released is number of oxygen consumed. Hypochlorous acid, hypochlorous acid, one molecule released, one molecular molecule is used up. Anything else? Yes, now we go ahead. Yes, we are not to miss out the water molecule over here. You see H2O, H2O. Now, go ahead and write the final equation. So, what do we get over here? Chlorine plus H2O2 gives you 2 HCl plus O2. Is not it simple? So, the color of chlorine water which is yellow, greenish yellow in color will actually be discharged on reacting with hydrogen peroxide and the solution will turn colorless. This is how you can also correlate the properties to the test of a substance to its uses as well. Now, go ahead try writing the reaction with ozone. It is a simple two step reaction. Try it. See the confidence rising. See the confidence building up for yourself. You can add or delete reactions as per your curriculum. I have tried to cover as many reactions as are possible or as are required for this level of learning, right? Now, add up the two reactions. What do we get? 
oh, oh, we haven't done, we haven't made use of the nascent oxygen. They haven't struck a friendship at all. So what do we do? One more reaction to go. Nascent oxygen plus nascent oxygen gives you O2. Now add up the two equations. Good? Good to go to the next uh, equations. We are now going to talk about reducing action in acidic medium and basic medium. In acidic medium, it reduces acidified KMnO4 and acidified potassium dichromate. Now, do you recall having written these reactions in the case of gases like sulfur dioxide? If not, then what we are going to do in today's lesson will be helpful there as well. So, let's get going. So, our first reaction remains the same. Hydrogen peroxide breaks down to give you water and nascent oxygen, right? Now, go on to acidified potassium permanganate solution, which is purple pink in color. Go ahead. How will you write the products? It is K2SO4. plus MnSO4 plus water and nascent oxygen. Again, nascent oxygen and nascent oxygen strike a friendship and they form O2. What's the next step for you to do? Balance. Equation balanced? Yes. Equation balanced? Yes. Now, we've got a task over here to balance the second equation. Some students find it as an uphill task. Don't worry. Go step by step. Try it. So, let's start with potassium. Two potassium here, only one potassium here. So, we'll put a two. Now, two manganese on the reactant side. There is only one manganese on the product side. So, let's make it two as well. Now, what about the sulfate? There are 2 plus 1, 3 sulfate, whereas on the reactant side, there is only 1 sulfate. So, let us make it as 3. Let's check out oxygen. 4 times 2 is 8 plus 4 times 3 is 12, makes it 20. What about on the right-hand side, the product side? So, we have oxygen 4, 4 times 2, 8 plus 1 plus 1. Oh, oh, so we are short of 6 oxygen. So what do we do? We put a 5 over here. Because we have to balance oxygen, let's put a 5 in front of the nascent oxygen. So how many have we got here? 4, 8, and there we go, a 6 here as well and the number of oxygen is balanced. Let's check out hydrogen. Is it balanced or not? 3 times 2, 6. Oh, oh, oh. 3 times 2, 6, right? Now let's check out the oxygen. I think we did make a mistake over here in the totaling, didn't we? Let's check again. 4, 4 times 2, 8, plus 3, plus 5. How many oxygen over here? Calculate. Perfect. A 20 over here as well. So, we are good to go and add up the two equations. Doesn't it become simple and easy when you keep a positive attitude and don't give up easily, right? So, let's add up. Now, you notice over here, we've got 5 nascent oxygen. So, 5 plus 1, 6. Whereas, what we are using up over here is only 2 nascent oxygen. So, I need to convert them into 6. How do we do that? Now, what you have to understand over here is 
we've got 5 plus 1, 6 nascent oxygen. Just collect the two of them. So when I'm saying nascent oxygen plus nascent oxygen means I've got two nascent oxygen. I have to use up 6, right? Because nascent oxygen can never be a product of the reaction. So how do we convert this 2 into 6? Yes, absolutely, by multiplying this entire equation by 3. What's the next step? No profit, no loss. Remove the oxygen. There we go. Now, next step is to add up the 3 equations to give us the final equation. So, what do we get over here? 2 KMnO4. Yes, go on to write the uh, reactants, the total reactants over here plus H2O2 plus 3 H2SO4, 3 molecules of sulfuric acid will give us, we've got K2SO4 plus MnSO4 and how many of MnSO4 have we got? 2 now, what about the water molecules? 3 water plus 1 water gives us 4 water molecules. And finally, we have oxygen gas being liberated and we have 3 molecules of oxygen. Now, this we had mentioned is pink in color. What about the products? Potassium sulfate, manganese sulfate, they are all colorless. So, what will happen to the color of these solutions in the presence of hydrogen peroxide? Yes, it turns it into colorless. So, we can use this reaction as a test for hydrogen peroxide, right? So, this is how we correlate the properties of a substance to its testing as well. Acidified potassium dichromate, orange in color. Yes, you've used it in the laboratory also to test a number of gases, especially sulfur dioxide, right? Now, hydrogen peroxide, first reaction remains the same. Look at the second reaction. Acidified potassium dichromate, so potassium K2Cr2O7 plus H2SO4. So, let's break it down from here. Go ahead and try completing the reaction. So, potassium with sulfate, chromium with sulfate, potassium sulfate, chromium sulfate, water and nascent oxygen. Again, the task for us is to balance this equation. Potassium 2, potassium 2, yes. Chromium 2, chromium 2, perfect. Sulfate, 3 of sulfate and 1 more of sulfate gives us 4 of sulfate. So, we need to make 4. Now, next step is to check out the hydrogen. We've got 4 times 2, 8 hydrogen. Whereas on the product side, we've got only 2. So, let's make that also as 8. Let's check out the oxygen. So, 7 plus 16, right, gives us 23. What about on the product side? So, we've got 4 oxygen plus 4 times 3, 12 plus 4. So, till now we've got how many with us? 12 plus 8 gives us 20. So, I am short of 3. Simple, put a 3 nascent oxygen over here. Right. What is the third equation you are going to write? Again, nascent oxygen plus nascent oxygen. I can simply write it as 2 nascent oxygen giving me O2. What is the next step you are going to do? You have already balanced the equation. Yes, you are going to add it up but not without equalizing the number of nascent oxygen on the product and the reactant side. So, 3 plus 1, 4. We need to use up 4 nascent oxygen. What do I do? 
I multiply this entire equation by 2 again. So no profit, no loss. We cancel out the nascent oxygen. Now add the two equations. So you will have hydrogen peroxide plus acidified potassium dichromate which is orange in color and we have 4 H2SO4 because it is an acidic medium. Do not forget that gives us the products K2SO4 plus chromium sulfate. Now it is this chromium sulfate which is green in color. So let me do something over here. Let me write it in green so that you are able to remember it as well. Yes. And then total water 4 plus 1. How many water molecules do you have? 5 water molecules. And what about the oxygen? How many oxygen molecules will be there? Yes, do not forget this too. So, you will have 2O2. To make it easy to remember what I have done is I have done the potassium dichromate in orange color. So, again if you notice uh, there is a change in color. There is an observable change in color which can be used to detect the particular substance. But it would not be a conclusive test because we know that sulfur dioxide also turns acidified potassium dichromate from orange to green. So tell me what test can you do to conclude that a given liquid is hydrogen peroxide? Think about it. Let us now go on to the reducing action in basic medium. In fact, reducing action in basic medium is very, very effective. We are going to talk about two reactions over here. Conversion of potassium ferricyanide to ferrocyanide being the first one. So again, I will go start with the same first equation. Hydrogen peroxide breaking down to give us water and nascent oxygen ferricyanide to ferrocyanide. You see it is FeCN6 valency 3 or oxidation state of the entire ion being 3. Potassium ferrocyanide again FeCN6 but the valency being 4. What is the next step you are going to do? Yes, first of all write oxygen plus oxygen or you can write two nascent oxygen whichever way you are comfortable. So that becomes your third equation. Next thing what are we going to do? Yes, balance each of the equations. Balanced? Yes, balanced. Now balance this one. Pause the video. Try it yourself so that you are confident enough to write this equation on your own. For reaction with alkaline KMnO4, again the original color alkaline uh, KMnO4, what will be the color, what will be the change in color and why it happens. Let us see again the first step Hydrogen peroxide changes to water and nascent oxygen. Go ahead, KMnO4. will give you K2MnO4 that is potassium manganate plus water plus nascent oxygen. And then two nascent oxygen combining to give you O2. What do you have to do over here? Also remember the purple color of potassium permanganate will now turn greenish. You see the difference in the acidic and alkaline medium. 
in acidic medium it was changing from purple to colorless whereas here it is changing from purple to green because of the reaction that is taking place. Now I am leaving for you to balance the equations add them up. You have any doubts you put them in the comment section. You want to confirm your answer most welcome to check in the comment section. Although I am very very confident by that by now you would be able to solve and you would be able to write these equations on your own. You do not need any hand holding now as far as hydrogen peroxide is concerned. The only advice that I would give you over here is to once you have completed the topic try writing these equations once again without guidance. Try splitting them up, balancing and then adding them up. Simple, as simple as that. Coming to the last property of hydrogen peroxide, we are talking about the bleaching action of hydrogen peroxide. What is the principle behind it? Bleaching action means to make it colorless. Now bleaching action by substances can be by oxidation. It can also be by reduction but it depends upon the nature of the material, nature of the substance that you are using for bleaching, whether the process will take place by oxidation or by reduction. So can you guess in the case of hydrogen peroxide bleaching action would be by what process? Yes, absolutely. It will be by oxidation. Why? Because hydrogen peroxide is able to give nascent oxygen which combines with the colored substance or material and oxidizes it in order to make it colorless. So we have the oxidized form of the substance which is colorless. What type of substances can we bleach using hydrogen peroxide? We can bleach delicate materials like silk, wool, hair, you know the color, the hair coloring that many people apply in fact has you use a coating of hydrogen peroxide followed by the color. So the hair is first bleached and then colored. Cotton, ivory, etc. So these can be bleached easily with hydrogen peroxide without damage to them. So what should I fill in the blank over here? Bleaching is by? Very correct. It is by oxidation and since there are no reducing substances in the environment, the bleaching action is more lasting, it is more permanent. It, does, it does not happen that the substance regains its color easily when oxidized with hydrogen peroxide. Now the target for you to do is to find out the uses of hydrogen peroxide. Before you watch the next video, please make a list of the different uses that hydrogen peroxide is put to based on the chemical reactions that we have studied so far. The most recent one being the bleaching action, right? So we talked about bleaching action, we talked about reaction with silver oxide, we talked about the reaction with lead dioxide, we also talked about the reaction with moist chlorine. Am I giving you hints over there? Yes, please. Go ahead and find out the uses of hydrogen peroxide before we bring an end to this topic in the next video. So see you soon, stay happy, stay
स्टे हेल्दी